Hello, it's been a while, sorry. Uh, as I mentioned previously, my cameraman uh, left the country a few years back and it's been a little bit difficult to, to record stuff. But now we have this 2020 coronavirus thing, I've been more adventurous. And so I've set this up in my own home. Uh, there won't be as many active shots, but we'll do our best. I know I haven't posted anything in like a year, two years, or anything, or, or anything often. Uh, I do post regularly, like daily, on Instagram. Same thing, Inquisitive Quill, no spaces, no underscore. I've actually been doing that non-stop since like, what, like July 2016? So it's been a solid four years, at least, of daily posts. So there you can see what I'm up to. Anyway, today I'm gonna talk about the 149. I just realized one of them is a little dirty, but whatever. So, 149 has been around since the 50s. Uh, the previous model was 139. That thing is super rare. Early models were made from celluloid. These are the 50s. There are plenty of people who have spent way more time, way more effort into acquiring all or as many 149s as possible. And there are plenty of lists online about like how to date them. Uh, but I've done my best. I've done what I could here. Uh, to give you a selection and a general idea. This is not a comprehensive review of the 149. This is just something slightly better than me buying a 149, using it for a month, and then coming over here to talk about it. So, earliest ones were made from celluloid. That was the first decade or so. The caps are yellow. The ink window is yellow. It's a three-tone nib. Feeds different across all generations. The nib, it varies a little bit. It has a telescopic piston mechanism. There's a little looseness before it engages the piston and then does a two-part movement. Which I'm not going to try very hard because apparently I still have cleaning water still inside here. 18C. Then along came the 60s and it switched to plastic. And actually plastic everything. Which is what this is. You can see it bears some resemblance to the celluloid. Especially down here. Because uh, like the later ones they switch to a completely different slightly different uh, piston so plastic one plastic one still three tone slightly different tritone 18c nib uh, sections a little different everything is plastic you have more modern ink window that you see here it's got it's not very visible but you can see it's pretty black most of the insides are plastic yes this makes them more fragile uh, they are known to have issues it is not super common to find these. And then you have the 70s and 80s, which where they switched from a tritone to a bitone. So not gold, silver, gold. They went to just gold and silver. And they changed from 18C and 14C to 14K and 18K markings. C and K don't really make much difference. It's just a design thing, I think. So you see a lot of these on the second market. And there are minor generational differences. We won't get into that. And then the 90s rolled around. And then they changed the feed from what we call the split ebonite feed to a plastic feed. That's what we see here. And back to tritone, but still maintaining the 18k and 14k uh, markings. And that was around for a good decade or so. And then only recently have they switched it up to uh, the modern markings. Recent past five years or so. They kept the tritone, says Leo, as he holds up a rhodium platinum trim model. Uh, but they just, they've just fully committed to 18K, and so the, the most modern ones don't even say 18K, they just say AU750, which is just like 75% gold content. And also, they made a whole bunch of models in different colors, such as standard yellow gold, uh, platinum, and rose gold. Rose gold can be a little bit hard to see until you like shove it right next to a yellow gold and then there's a, you can see there's a difference. Um, around the 90s was around the time when they also started making slightly, a couple like special editions, like the introduction of the writer's editions. 
let's just say I might have gone a little bit overboard while I was away from YouTube and this may or may not be mine so they had the Hemingway whose design was based on the 139 the guy before this obviously not in celluloid but uh, the flat ends that that clip is very 139-ish and is very pretty and also way too overpriced uh, they also came out with other bright editions in 149 size include the Dumas and more recently the Homer and while the Hemingway has a rather boring nib that they put any effort into it the Dumas and the, and the Homer do have uh, their own unique nibs I just ink this up and do a sample writing sample later uh, when I get to talking around about the nibs so I also have one more special edition here which I recently obtained it's a Elbe Harmonie based on the Hamburg concert hall and it has a small print engraving I can't tell on the front on, on the cap and also a similar engraving on the nib and it's in rose gold sort of pretty um, most of the reason why I died chasing these is because I wanted I really like I really like the O3B nib on Mont Blanc unlike Pelican who in modern times uh, has made their fat nibs rounder and rounder not that they're bad it's just that has different purposes uh, like I like using them for drawing the Mont Blanc fat nibs B and above tend to be stubbish and more stub like character and gives more line variation that explains why there's so many. Sort of, maybe. Most of these are B's or above, except for this one, which was quite recent. This is a modern 149, uh, which brings me up to the first point. Most, most, all of these nibs do not have size markings. You either have to guess, or you really hope that it has a sticker which tells you what nib size it is. In this case, this EF is a modern EF, uh, which feels like they took an F and they slimmed it which means that the when you write with it it feels a little bit architecty now some people might not like that some people will want a lot like like round efs that's one thing to be careful of when buying a new one which brings the topic should you buy one is there any reason to buy one the answer is no why would you buy these it's useless they they, they write just like a preppy i'm just kidding it's a tough topic. So I'm, I like the nib. That's why I bought them, and they do have quite a lot of nibs, which, which is a good thing. Uh, some of them also pretty. That's another reason why you buy pens. Uh, is it worth it? Are they good value for money? Not really. I don't. I really don't think they're a good value for money, especially if you buy them at the boutique price. I mean, for some people that's not an issue. Then great, buy whatever you like. But as you can see, a lot of these are like older, older pens. Um, and also I just wanted to collect like as many fat nibs as possible throughout the generations and see if there was any difference. The answer is, there is, it's very minor <laughs> and purely for fun. I mean, having said that, they are very well made. Many of the 70s and onwards plastic I want for nines are quite uh, resilient, they're durable, they don't have many massive flaws. You should be careful if you're buying a second hand. Um, things you should be careful about. You want to make sure all the fins on the feed, especially all the Edmite feeds, you want, you want to make sure that they're still there and not like cracked. Common places where cracks occur, back here where the piston screws in, although that's not much of a problem. Maybe in this section, you gotta look really carefully. If you can't, whatever. Uh, you, you want to make sure it has a clear ink window. If it has a dirty ink window that still has like ancient ink in it, it will be hard to clean because if there's dried ink inside, you're going to have trouble moving the piston. Uh, and if you can't move the piston, you can't shove water in, which leads me to the next point, which is unlike a pelican, where you can unscrew the nib unit and shove water in, shove tissue in and clean it, it's not that easy for a 149. You need special tools for the most part to be able to unscrew the nib unit out or the piston mechanism back so you can like give a thorough cleaning and uh, and or adding grease. Usually what I do when I, when if I need to clean these uh, is I will do the piston thing in and out a few times 
and then I will just leave them overnight with water inside, which is why I've got stuff here. It's not ink, it's water that's been hanging around and just, just cleaning the insides. And I'll rinse and repeat maybe like two or three days, and by the third day, after leaving it overnight to soak with water inside, uh, then, but then it's usually clean. Or you can just like not swap ink. They're pretty re resilient against massive problems. Size-wise, they can be large for a lot of people. I understand that. In a size lineup, a 1.9 is around the same size as a Sailor King of Pen. Never similar, surprise, surprise. M1000 is a little bit slimmer, around the same size. I guess if you're used to the 1000, then the 1.9 is, is, is only a small step up. Just roll along an Opus 88 here to compare. The girth are quite similar, but the Mont Blanc feels like the fattest, if I'm eyeballing it, honestly. If you're used to big pens, you love this. Uh, otherwise, if you're more like an M800 person like me, then stick with M800s. You don't need all the extra hassle. It might make you feel fuzzy inside that you have a Mont Blanc branded pen, I guess, maybe. Um, if you're used to Katamushi, no big deal. One for nine is a very normal size pen. The Katamushi is bigger. If you're used to using the Mickey Emperors, which no one is because it's a giant stick of ebonite, uh, this one, this is so different. I have to, when I write with this, I write with my entire arm. Otherwise I get hand cramps. It is on the large size. It's not the largest, obviously, but it's quite large. Uh, that can be an issue. Best if you can try this yourself before you buy one. Hopefully someone in your local pen group has one. The slightly architect EF trait is occasionally apparent throughout the generations. A lot of local Asian, Chinese, Taiwanese, Hong Kong uh, pen people really like 70s, 60s EFs because they do like that that slightly architect Naginata like uh, feel. It's very light, but it's enough for them to be happy. If you like that, then great. Otherwise, FMB are much more round, uh, possibly more suitable for, for regular writing. Are earlier ones softer? This is a 50 celluloid. B nib, it is stiff. I, I think it, it, it varies. Uh, it's not an exact sort of like guarantee. This piston ring um, is an indicator of a 60s plastic like plastic mechanism. Uh, this is also not very soft. I have tried copies which are soft, but I wouldn't call them noodles or anything. I would just call them like sort of bouncy. Um, you don't really get that much line variation. For line variation, that's why you get the O3B. Like I have on the Homer. And the 90th. And a few of these over here, which, which is why I bought them in the first place. That is uh, most of what I think I can say. Writing sample. I actually have two cameras going on because at this point my cameraman would walk his way around here and like go behind my shoulder and give you a uh, over the shoulder look. Fortunately we don't have that luxury right now. Got this though. Ugh. I am going oh sorry for my fat face. So this is just the right size and we can see most of it hopefully and now you see why it's quite difficult to do these video writing samples because that's in the way of my right hand but we'll do our best I'll do it at a small angle please forgive I think this up um, I just think this up for this I shoved in Ink Studio 740 inside it it is a close approximation to bung block sap bung blocks Bung box sapphire blue. It's a very uh, strong bluey blue. This is a modern. Uh, this is a modern. Oh, it's ink. Good, it's ink. Bottom uh, for nine. Uh, 18k. Oh. 3B, let's try and write small. Sailor Ink Studio 740. It's smooth. Uh, 
I really like how smooth L3B is. It's got good line variation. Preferably, be, it's great for like burning through ink when you're writing letters to, to pen pals. I guess this enters rotation now. Uh, this one's slightly different. Most of them have plastic threads and everything, uh, but because of the design of the Homer, they were like, oh, let's make something one for nine size that looks like a horse. Well, in order to maintain that horse-like look, they have to guarantee the alignment of the cap and the body. So they had to use metal threads to make it stop at a specific spot. A uh, small downside about that is that it meant that in early copies, that metal stuff would scratch the section. And that's why this copy has tape around the section. And ink stuck in the tape. But that's fine. That will wash off. Um, so far, I don't have any issues with this particular copy. It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a dust collector. I'm really afraid dust will collect in those lines because they're engraved inside. Um, I guess I'll worry about that long term, short term, whatever. Otherwise, like, I don't know when this is going out, but um, Fountain Pen Day is soon, and usually people do deals on Fountain Pen Day and get a small discount. Maybe you might consider getting a rose gold or platinum trim or just a regular yellow gold of uh, uh, 1.9. It's too big, whatever, don't bother. You don't have to buy everything. I don't have to buy everything. This isn't everything. I guess a close competitor would be the Sailor King of Pen. This is bouncier. Not softer, just, just this is springier. Uh, I still wouldn't, I still wouldn't use this for like flex or anything. It's just bouncier. Downside the upside, it comes with way less ink capacity, but it's much easier to clean. And if you're really lucky, you can probably even pull out the nib and feed to wash easily. So, you know, also this does not come in as many variations as uh, the Sailor does. Like they've got the flat tops, the Neat Prophet version, they have the Urushi, the Ebonites. Downside, only comes in M&B. Or if you have a lot of money, old ones with the Naginata nibs. But that's a whole different story. So, uh, there you go. How about compared to the M1000? I know that sample looks uh, quite wet. I feel like the Pelican is even wetter on all the nib sizes. Maybe 20 to 30 percent more ink output. I'm less likely to use most of my M1000s just because they're a bit too wet for normal use, especially on like my thin in 52 GSM to over, they will, there's a lot more ghosting and potential bleed through. Whereas I don't have as much issue with my Mont Blanc 149s, which is why I'm saying the Mont Blanc is probably slightly more dry. Anyway, I've yet to, I've yet to film enough. Uh, hopefully, if this turns out okay, ah! Hopefully, if this turns out okay, I will make more. Anyway, hope that was helpful for you to. Decide whether or not a 1.9 is in your sights next. If not, just enjoy the, the shots. Oh, this is way prettier. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. And maybe I'll see you guys next time. Don't fall.